Hi everyone, we're going to start this video off in our ArcGIS online content page. As you can see, I'm in the folder where my project currently is. Every one of these contents are publicly shared and I have my map layers here, which are the feature hosted layer. I have my web map and then I have my web application. And this is the web app that we built in the last video. So I didn't mention this, but to edit a web map, you simply go into the items page of the web map and you can see there's buttons to view the application or to configure the app. And if you select configure the app, it'll take you to a new page that is in the edit setting. And you, you can tell you're in the edit setting, not just from the buttons, but also from the URL when it says an edit equals true. So that's a little tip about that. So going back to my items page, you'll notice I gave it a thumbnail. I could give it a description and possibly a term of use as well. Now that that's out of the way, we're going to learn how to build a simple dashboard. Traditionally, dashboards are the single screen informational display of monitoring an environment or a situation. And here we have the famous John Hopkins COVID-19 dashboard that I'm sure a lot of you have seen. But sometimes dashboards don't need to be this grand and packed with information. It could just be a simple data visualization tool. For example, this here is a dashboard. And this is just a simple dashboard showing all the shots that were made by the Toronto Raptors, the champion. And it's just about isolating data and having that interaction with the data set. So it's a very simple graphic to have your audience play around with and get a better in-depth knowledge about, you know, what kind of player, potentially in this case, what kind of player plays well under which area on the court. And another dashboard here is the Toronto real estate dashboard, which I brought up before about the pop-ups, but here we have dashboard being embedded to monitor the trends of our real estate market. So you have these neat tabs here, an interactive uh, chart to go with a map. So these are all perks that of dashboard that people don't usually see in a dashboard or they're like, why are we building dashboard? It's just this big screen, you know, operation kind of thing, but it's not really. You can use dashboard and leverage this as a data visualization tool. So let's get started on how to build a dashboard. Let's go back to the map that we've been working on. So I have my content page open with my web map here. I'm going to click on it. So I'm going to build a dashboard from this existing web map. So here I'm going to create a web application and it gives you option. There are the configurable application, which we went over in the last video, web app builder, which is one of our builder, but mainly focus on geospatial data set. And then we have story maps, which we'll go over in the next video about another digital storytelling builder. But what we want to talk about is the dashboard. So let's click on that. So once you click on that, Windows is going to prompt you to ask you to give your dashboard a name. So this is going to create a new web application file within your content page. So I'm going to name it uh, food banks, food banks deliveries to seniors. Um, give it a proper tag once again, <laughs> food banks, seniors, Toronto. Um, demographics. So this dashboard looks at the food banks that are delivering to seniors. And I'm going to save it in the folder and hit OK. After you select OK, you are then brought to a new window, which is the interface where you built and configure your dashboard. The difference between configurable applications and dashboard is the new amount of freedom you get to customize your application. Now notice there are no pop-up asking you what you want to show, running you through what to customize. It's simply a interface where you start from scratch and build up to the dashboard you want. So let's add an element to our dashboard. To add an element, 
we simply click the plus sign here and you can see all the options of elements you can add to a dashboard. Let's say I want a list. I want a list of all the food banks that are available in Toronto. And to do that, <clears throat> you have to first select the layer. So here I have the layers of all the layers in my map and I'm going to select the food bank layer. And notice the map icon has actually translated to the list. So now we make sure that it's food bank. We don't need to filter any data set. Uh, we want to display maybe a maximum of 300 points because I believe we have more than that. So notice how it went. The scroll bar actually went smaller because there was more than 25. Uh, you can sort by a particular column. So let's sort by the organization's name. Next to customize what we see here. So this is usually the preview of the element and the configuration panel is on the left of the element. So let's configure the list and show some text for our list. So here we can say name of the food bank. We can find that column of the name. So now it has the name of the food banks. We can also have the address. Find the address column and let's distinguish it a bit. Make it bold, maybe make it even bigger. So I'm gonna 16. And then the website to the organization because we have that information in our URL column. Our URL column is simply a squirrely bracket. It still uses the same syntax as you would for pop-ups. And if I hover over it, you can see that it brings me to a website of the food bank. So that's good. Now going into our general configuration, this is where we configured the overall characteristic of this element, which is a list. So we, let's give our list a name. And it's important to name your element because when you start to connect your maps and your list, basically making the connection with all your elements, you need names to distinguish what is connecting with what. You can also give this a, a title, so list of food banks in Toronto. You can make it bold, bigger, maybe give it a heading so it stands out. I like to recommend this to a lot of people about the last update text. These are the text here on the far right corner that tells you when the data set was last updated. These are unnecessary text for our audience member. They don't need to know that because we're not showing a real time or a live data set. So let's turn that off to save some real estate here. And right now I'm quite happy. I don't need a description. The text color is fine with me and background color is all fine. I don't have a theme going on, but I can always go back to change this. All right. So let's hit OK and done. And now you see the list will show up on the left side of my map becomes its own element. So let's add a graph now. I want to add a graph to showcase the age distribution of 70 and above seniors. So I'm going to go into my age and neighborhood 2019 layer data set and pick categories from fields, which are my columns, where ages are 70. And we have population 75 can actually type it out 80 and population 85 and over that and now I have a distribution of the age and we don't want the average we want the sum so now it's showing that there are 86.2 thousand age 70 to 74 people in the city of Toronto so let's customize the chart here next we go into chart and we can change the orientation of the chart. I actually like it vertical before and go to category axes to change the label of the category. So I can type in 70 to 74 years. I guess I can leave the years. 75 to 79. Actually, let's make it cleaner. So we don't really need the years because we can actually label that. 85 plus and give it a title so age we can change the colors of the text and the axes but let's leave it as it is 
title of the side here. We don't really need one because we're talking about people of their age. So we don't need a label for the value axis or the y axis. As for guidelines, we don't need a guide. Guide is kind of just adding a line to draw your audience's attention to a reference point. For example, the flatten the curve graph we've been seeing quite frequently. That guideline is equivalent to the hospital capacity line that ran across the graph. So we don't need that in our graph. Let's go into series and series are basically the customization of these bars and it can change the color around. Let's give it green. Not sure if you noticed, but green is actually my favorite color. <laughs> and then finally we go to general, which is the general customization of the element. I'm going to give it a title, age, distri age distribution chart. Um, I'm going to also give it a title here in the middle. Turn off the last update text. And I'm quite satisfied with this. Let's see that in our dashboard. Nice. Now I don't really like the orientation and the layout of my dashboard. I'm going to actually move things around so I can dock it to the bottom of the map. And notice how there's like a thick borderline here that you can play around with. I can actually eliminate that borderline by dragging and then holding shift on your keyboard. Notice the difference, it changed from blue to a green. Hold the shift and dock it to the bottom and notice how that border is now gone. And now when I drag everything, it becomes a group of element. I can also drag this over, hold shift, and I'm actually gonna put it here. And now notice how there's like a slick divide between the elements. So now that I have some elements added to my dashboard, I can add some interaction between these elements. So I want to be able to filter up by a neighborhood and get a list of the food banks within that neighborhood, as well as a distribution of seniors within that neighborhood. So let's add a header because with a header, you can apply a filter on the header. So I'm happy with that and I can add a category selector, which brings me to the category selector page. In the selector options, I'm gonna identify category selection by feature, which would be our neighborhood layer. And there's no filter on the layer, but I am going to make sure that the text here are my neighborhood names. I'm going to extend the maximum categories to 200 because I know there are 100 plus neighborhoods. And then I'm going to sort that neighborhood. And you'll notice it's sorted. It's right now just currently selected on Young and Sinclair. As for the selector, I can give it a label, neighborhood. And just only allow for single selection and I'm going to make sure that neighborhood equals a drop down value and have a none option so that it's not constantly filtering out your dashboard and give my category selector a name so this filter selector a name I'm going to call it neighborhood filter and going into action this is where I identify what is being done as my audience member interact with this filter. So I want to make sure that it filters out my food bank list spatially because I don't have a neighborhood column within the food bank layer. I also want to be able to filter out the age distribution chart by spatial or by the uh, neighborhood names and then zoom into my map of that neighborhood and maybe add a flash to the neighborhood. I can also make sure it shows pop up on the map and let's hit done. So once I hit done you'll see I have my neighborhood filter and let's say I click on the annex area. It'll filter out the food banks in annex neighborhood has my pop-up, also has my 
polygon with the age distribution chart changed to the annex content. So let's actually change into another baby village. And there you go have it. No food banks in that area so it's not showing up for anything. Now this is a little weird because I don't have a button to zoom in and out on my map and I can add that by going into the configure. So I need to hover the map, hit configure and add maybe a legend, a default bookmark or extent, a zoom in and out capability. So let's hit done and see those changes. Now we have the home extent, the legend, as well as some zoom in capability buttons on our map. Let's change this back to none. And so this is typically how you create interaction between your components. And now each of these components, when you can interact with, should have an action segment where you indicate individual connection between the elements. So for example, I want to be able to click on a list here and zoom my map into that point. So let's try that. So if I click on the Agent Court Community Service Association, it zooms me into that point and centers it. So that's typically how you create a dashboard. I went over a very brief tutorial. However, if you go into the story map, there are a lot more resources there that you can read up on and do a lot more. I also encourage you to just browse through examples of dashboard to see the capability as well as inspiration of other people's dashboard.